Hi, I'm Miriam from FunFTC, and I'm here with 23263, the prototypers uh, at the Chesapeake Regional Championship. They are a rookie team this season and already have an amazing robot. Let's get more into it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so can you please start us off talking a little bit about how you approach the season? Uh, so we approach the season by uh, using our engineering uh, design process, uh, which was basically like uh, just like planning and then uh, iterating and then like reflecting on uh, how our tests went and uh, yeah, we use this process for uh, most of our robot, and that's how we had like a we made a successful robot. And did you like start out in CAD or anything, or just go right into it? So we started out um, brainstorming. Our design team started brainstorming some ideas of how we could actually get the pixel into um, a claw mechanism that we decided because a claw is really easy. It's really accurate to actually pick up a pixel especially when using grippers on the claw. So we wanted to first come up with an idea of how to actually get the claw to pick up the pixel, and even if we had to get the claw inside the robot, and which is where we got our first iteration with an intake design with surgical tubing. Um, of course, this is our second iteration of the robot, where it only has a claw that serves as the intake and outtake. But our old robot in our first qualifier, it used an intake with surgical tubing, and then a wooden box in the front where there was a claw that picked up the pixel and placed it on the backdrop at the 30 degree angle. But we realized there was a few um, it was there was a few problems with that. And it was really uh, sometimes it was inconsistent and sometimes it wasn't as efficient as we, as we wanted it to be. So we just decided to change the whole mechanism into one claw so that the, the pixel goes inside the claw directly. And it saved a lot of time. All right, so you talked about your claw. So can you tell me a little bit about how that works? So here we have this claw. So these angles, it's the same angle as the pixel right here. As you can see, it easily mold, molds around the pixel. And we have a few grippers, one here and one on this middle arm right here. And, what we, and we have two servos. And the two servos allow us to um, place either one pixel or both pixels at one time. So we can easily create mosaics because our claw is really precise for creating mosaics. And we can also um, increase the slides so we can go to higher set lines. We can talk more about the slides. So uh, we use uh, BWT slides and uh, they're basically uh, like a modified version of Mizumi slides so that uh, we can use like a string system and uh, yeah, these slides have been proven to be uh, very smooth and uh, and like good for like just like lifting up our claw mechanism. So that sounds great. So can you also talk to me a little bit about your drone launcher? Uh, so our drone launcher, um, we had to find the right angle to uh, set our drone launcher up so it can go to the um, so it can go into the zones and um, um, we use rubber bands to launch the drone, so it goes at a, a precise angle and drops. I can also talk about the aerodynamics of our drone. So this drone, uh, the, the wingspan is like really low, so to minimize the aerodynamic forces that would uh, change its direction, so it's, it's really consistent. And did, you, and did that drone design, was that your initial drone design, or did you have to keep iterating throughout the season? Uh, we iterated like a lot. We had like a whole trash can full of like uh, not working drones. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> so we also experimented with the um with the airflow of this drone. So as you can see, we have these dihedral angles in the back. So what this drone does is it's called a nose diver drone because the tip is a lot heavier. So when it goes up and it falls directly back down. 
So this is an iteration from our first drone launcher where it went flat. So even though it landed in the third zone, it would slide all the way past into the into the first zone or even farther. So that's why we came up with the nose diver drone, which went directly up and then directly down. So it doesn't actually slide as much. And so because of this, we found a problem where the drone wouldn't actually go far enough. And that's where the dihedral angles in the back came um, from. So we did a lot of research and we realized that the airflow, if it, we didn't have these dihedral angles, it would just go up and off this and it would just be drag. But we could actually use this drag to um, push the back of the drone. It could push it up, giving it the um, drone more altitude and in turn more distance. That sounds really good. So equally impressive as your hardware, I'm sure, is your software. So could you please walk me through that a bit? So first, first, swing mechanism, we use a paid system. And this allows the swing to act like somewhat like a servo. So it, it can like set positions for itself. Uh, we have distance sensors uh, in our claw to automatically clamp the pixels. But we decided not to use it in the competition because uh, sometimes it didn't work properly. We also have color sensors here to send telemetry string for the pixel color in each claw to the driver hub. And then here we have a final distance sensor. And when we get close enough to the back shot to score, our blinking blinking LEDs light up. Let's say this is the... So this is our placing. Yeah, so, so you, as soon you can see as the LEDs. The here. LEDs in the back, you see it turns red. So, that, so as soon as we close um, enough, go this in is close, not close enough. Yeah, so this is actually really helpful for the drivers. Yeah. Because we can't actually see exactly where the backdrop is for us. So thank you so much for your time, the prototypers, uh, and good luck today. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.